Okay folks, g'day, welcome back. So today we're going to have a quick talk about the hook blocks on the crane and a couple of things we need to know about them. Alright, so first thing we obviously want to know is the weight of our hook blocks because we need to take that into account whenever we're lifting a load because the crane is lifting those as well. So we'll have a quick look. So we're going to find the weight of it is going to be stamped on it. So hopefully you can see that there. So we've got one hook block there that's 285 kilos, okay? But on this crane, we actually have two hook blocks attached. So the crane's always going to be lifting the two of them. So it doesn't matter which one you're using, you still need to take into account the weight of the second hook block as well. All right, so we can see the bottom of this one here. All right, so this bottom one is headache ball. Okay, your auxiliary hook, it's commonly known as the headache ball. So that's 105 kilos. So 285 and 105, means that in total we have a load of 390 kilos that we've got to add on to whatever load we're lifting because they are going to be being lifted as well. Okay, so another few important things we need to know about the hook block is we need to know how many parts of line we have in the main hook because that's going to determine how much we can lift as well. So let's spin around here. Now, we have a look up here. Right, you can see we have one, two, three, four parts of line, which means that rope goes up and around until you have four parts of line in. So what effect that has, so this particular crane has a line pull of 4.5 tonne on the winch, which means with four parts of line, four times 4.5 means we can currently lift 18 tonne. Now, if we need to lift something heavier than 18 tonne, then we can disconnect it from the top, we can run it back around the top, back under, Right, we may need to move the sheaves over, but the way you reeve it, you go back to your operator's manual and it's going to have the reaving diagrams to tell you exactly which sheave the, what the rope needs to go over in order to get the desired number of parts of line. All right, so that's that. All right, the other things we need to check all right, is the rope terminations. So on these older cranes, they have what's known as a wedge and socket but it's more commonly known as a ham bone. All right, so if we poke this up here, okay, so hopefully we can see it up there. So we have our ham bone attaching the winch rope to the drum. All right, if we had an odd number of parts of line, it can come down and attach onto the hook block as well. Now, things to keep in mind about that ham bone. So if we pop it back up there again, okay. So on the dead end of the rope, hopefully you can see that. So on that dead end of rope, there's got to be a minimum of 200 mil of rope on the dead end of the hand bone. You'll also notice that it had a bulldog cramp on it. Now that bulldog cramp isn't there to stop it slipping through, it's there as an indicator. So when you put that bulldog clamp on, you keep that just off the hand bone so that when you're doing your inspection, if you come in to do the inspection, you find that bulldog clamp hard up against the ham bone, you're going to know you've had some slippage, which will require further and better investigation. So it may mean that the wedge has actually been put in the wrong way around, or you've got some other issue. Right, so always check that bulldog clamp and make sure it's sitting off the ham bone. Okay, so we'll have another quick look at that. Okay, hopefully you can see that there. So you've got your ham bone and the bulldog clip is sitting just off the hand bone as an indicator. All right, so that's just a couple of quick things we're going to look for on the hook block. Obviously we do the regular inspection, so we make sure our safety latch is working, we make sure there's no stretch in the bill of the hook, make sure you haven't got any gouging or any excessive wear in it. Now it's also a good idea just to feel pretty burrs in the hook as well, especially if you're going to be uh, attaching synthetic slings to it, because there's a good chance that they'll cut on it as well. Right, so make sure you check both hooks, check the latches, oh. okay, and you'll notice on the headache ball, you'll see the hand bone on the inside there. All right, so make sure all your retaining pins and everything else is in place. All right, so that's just a quick look at the hooks. We'll pop inside now and we'll have a look at a few other things to do with reeving of the hook and why we can have four parts in with one boom length and uh, more with a shorter boom. Okay, so we'll pop inside and we'll have a chat about that. Okay, now that we're inside, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the reason why we don't have too many parts depending on the um, length of the boom. 
Now, some of it's quite easy as if you have too many parts of line, if you've got eight parts of line and a full stick out, you may not reach the ground. But that's only one of the reasons. So another thing you need to be aware of is the weight of the hook as opposed to the parts of line depends on how much weight is actually being pulled on that winch. So to give you an example, and we'll keep the figures nice and simple so it's easy to follow along. So if we have our crane boom there, all right, rope comes over the top, comes down onto our hook, all right. Now, just to keep our figures nice and simple, let's say our hook lock weighs 400 kilos, all right. So, our hook lock weighs 400 kilos. Now, if we have four parts of line, right, so we've got four parts of line in there, that means that weight's been divided up amongst all four parts, which means you've only got about 100 kilos coming back down here onto the winch. Now, what you need to take into account is the weight of the rope running down the back of the boom as well. So, if we've got 100 kilos there, and we might have 50 kilos of rope running down that boom as well, which means that's going to counteract the 100 kilos there. So essentially, you end up with 50 kilos of load just holding the tension on that winch. Now, if we were to push our boom out further, right, that means we're going to have more rope running up the back of it. All right? And if we were to have eight parts of line in that, as opposed to the four parts, Right. So, eight parts of line on a 400 kilo hook, that means you've only got 50 kilos. It's been divided by the eight, which means you've got 50 kilos acting on the winch. But your boom's out further, so you might have 60 or 70 kilos running down the boom, which means the hook is actually lighter than the rope running down the back. So when you go to move that winch, what's going to happen, it's going to end up in a big bird's nest as well. Right, so always when you look at your load chart, so I've just got a quick load chart here. Right, so down the bottom, it will tell you for your boom length, how many parts of line is the maximum parts of line for that boom length. So always take note of what it says on here, because that's going to relate to how many parts of line you can have dependent on boom length. You'll find the more boom you've got out, the less parts of line you can typically have in that crane. Okay, so that's just a quick rough explanation. So keep in mind, whatever the weight of your hook block is, that's divided by the parts of line you have in the hook. Now, if the rope running down the back of the boom exceeds that weight you've got there, then you're in trouble and you're gonna end up with a big mess on your drum, which you may end up kinking and damaging your rope, which means replacing the whole rope as well. Okay, so keep that in mind. Always go by what's on the load chart as to how many parts of line you have in the hook. Okay, so thanks for your time. Don't forget to like and subscribe and thank you.